is I want to talk about this idea that actually this is all going to play out in one year, in 2024. And, uh, you know, everybody's always been talking about these cycles and we're going to have this, we're going to do this, and then we're going to have, you know, the sovereigns join in and the corporates join in and we're going to add this and we're going to add that. And I actually think right now what's going to happen my best guess as to what's happening is that this is all going to play out in one year, in 2024, very much like it happened in 2017. Now, I will remind everybody that Christmas of 2022, we were at 16,615. So we've basically quadrupled in one year. We were all quadrupled at 66,000. Now, everybody's talking about these very conservative, you know, we're going to go to 100K, we're going to go to 150K maybe. But I would argue if you have just quadrupled and you have just unleashed this ETF on Wall Street, actually, we're, we're probably way too conservative and we're underestimating the greed of Wall Street. And Wall Street is not going to play this thing slow at all. Wall Street's going to come in and and not just it's not just Wall Street meaning big hedge funds and so on. It's just retail public, you know. The retail public is about to get FOMO in a very big way. And if you go back to 2017 and let's replay exactly how that played out, it started a little slow. In March of 2017, uh, we had the the uh, Winklevi, their application, which they had put in several years earlier uh, for the first ETF, was rejected uh, by the SEC. And the market went down 30% in one day on that rejection. But then it started immediately coming back. And... Um, also in March, and I can't remember if it was before or after this uh, Winklevi rejection, uh, my friend Brock Pierce did the first ICO for a fund, which was blockchain capital. Uh, and I remember a couple days later, we were in my office, and I congratulated him on this fund. I was like, I, Brock, I don't even understand how that's even possible to do an ICO for a, a a blockchain fund. I mean, it just did that. Do you mean IPO? And he goes, no, ICO. And so, you know, that was the first time I'd heard of the word ICO. And I said, well, next time you need to do something for a hundred or $200 million. And, uh, he said, uh, oh yeah, it's already in the works. And, uh, yeah, sure enough. He had raised $4 million for this EOS project. Uh, Starting only uh, in June of 2018, starting in June of 2017 and leading up to June of 2018. So basically just a couple months later, uh, he was full on in, in that process. Uh, so, you know, things can happen very, very quickly in crypto. And I think things are going to happen very quickly this time around. Um, I think as I was, I was on this podcast for Blue Collar Bitcoin and, uh, you know, they were asking me about kind of, you know, well, what's happening after this? We're going to have the sovereigns do this. I'm gonna, I said, no, you know, this is the final straw. This is when you've actually, you've got the barriers to adoption to zero, effectively. Uh, and, and now you have the, uh, the ability for absolutely anybody to buy Bitcoin. There, there are no more barriers. There are 100 million Americans can go out tomorrow and buy Bitcoin. Every single barrier, every single education, all that stuff is over. And just in the last couple of weeks, we have now seen people like Merrill Lynch and uh, UBS and um, uh, uh, there's one other name I forget right now, but Merrill Lynch and UBS who previously said, well, we aren't going to support this, now said we will support this. Uh, Wells Fargo was the other name. So, you know, uh, Merrill Lynch has, uh, I had to look it up again, but, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a member of the Merrill Lynch family, and, you know, they have 3 million, uh, they have 3 million members with uh, $1.5 trillion in assets. 
Wells Fargo has 70 million uh, uh, accounts. Uh, so th these are just enormous, enormous institutions, and they're, they're now moving on board. And so this thing is going to happen. It's not going to happen slowly. It, this is not an educational process. And, and Wall Street are not people who are very slow and, uh, you know, slow and steady. And uh, you know, so, so we are going to see some real greed happening. And with that, I lead, I'm going to start the discussion with Legion. Go ahead, Legion. You're on, you're on deck. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I actually think that uh, it's a great topic for space. I want to make some points which I was thinking about recently. Hopefully, won't be much interrupted because we want to finish it. So, regarding your view about uh, this year that we can go in value tremendously, I agree and I think we do have uh, all things set up for explosive growth. And I also wanted to say one important thing about it. Uh, I recently have been thinking about store of value versus multiply of value. And I think Bitcoin is actually great uh, store of value long term. But for now, it's not yet in that point in terms of it's right now, it's even better multiply of value. When it will become much bigger, it will become less volatile. And then it will be like this perfect store of value because it doesn't leak like USD or even gold because of inflation. But uh, right now, we still have a lot of space to run while it's more in this infant uh, relatively state. And it can be a huge multiplier of value before it reaches maybe 100 yeah. trillion. So something like totally that. agree, Legion. I, I think it's, you know, we're, we're not, we are not, we are not here talking about Bitcoin as money. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go buy something with, and I need to store a little bit of money for the next three years. And because we're talking about, we've released this new thing out. There's a certain amount of lottery tickets. There's exactly 21 million lottery tickets. And, uh, you know, your family might be able to get a lottery ticket now, right? So now you have to ask yourself, how badly do you want that lottery ticket? Do you want to get it quickly or do you want to maybe kind of take a new number in line? And now I, I think that we're going to have this, this stampede. Once people sort of understand that this is the game theory and that all they have to do to play in this game is to go to their brokerage account and they have to buy you know, a, a few equivalent units of, of Bitcoin. And, uh, and I just think it is, it, it, we have removed every single obstacle and we're going to see a very similar to viral propagation, very similar to what we all went through with COVID. You know, and I posted this one thing where, you know, 77% of Americans have gotten COVID at this point. So, you know, this is about to happen to Bitcoin. You know, we are going to see some kind of, uh, Thing like that. Okay, asteroid. Why don't you why don't you hop in and and educate us? Uh, I don't know if I can educate, but what what, what do we what are we talking about when we say like it's it's going to be on this year like just absolute mania, just just god candles, just everyone rushing in, just like we can't have enough. Is it, yeah, I mean, look, I think look, we're speaking let's, about? Let's, let's let's go back to twenty seventeen, right? So twenty seventeen. First of all, before 2017, we had this barrier at 1,000. I think everybody, I don't know if everybody was around then, but, you know, I remember very much at 1,000, right? When we hit 1,000, then we bounced off 1,000, and it looked like, okay, 1,000's thousands, thousands it, man. That's the, that's the top, right? And then we kind of cruised through 1,000, okay, um, in, I think it was in January of 2017. And that already felt like, wow, we're back, we're over a thousand, right? And I think right now we have this sort of psychological similar barrier at 60, let's call it 66,000, right? So we were at 66,000 in 2020. We're at 66,000 in 2021. And now four years later, the first, you know, the, the, uh, sorry, three, yeah, four years later after the first hit at, 66,000, we're at this new 66,000. So we're going to cruise through it. And then we're going to, then now the question is how, where do we go? Right. Where do we go this year? Where do we go this year? Can, can we see something like a 10 X this year? Not even this, just forget the word cycle. I'm this year. Uh, 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 so, 
my just random gut feeling, which is don't put too much weight on it, is we're going to flip gold sooner than anyone could possibly imagine. But we'll see. Yeah, no, look, after it, I'm, I'm just trying to make the case here. <laughs> I'm just trying to make the case that yeah. things things are going to happen fast. Okay, we are not. Hey, so, hey, so, guys, guys, so let me chime in here. So, so Fred, um, long time listener, first time caller. I just dated myself, Gen X guy. So, Clint. <laughs> Class of 2017, Bitcoin, May 20th, 2017, um, the week before, Bitcoin had crossed its all-time high of $2,000. It was trading at 19, $1,936. Okay, what, what, month, what month was that, Brian? Um, it was May. May it was okay. May, so oh, yeah. May 17th, Brian yeah. Kelly, CNBC, and he said, yeah. oh, the only way you could do it in your brokerage account is GBTC. Yep. And I, I moved... I moved more than a million dollars in five minutes, sold out my position in Facebook, <laughs> and I did it. I couldn't do it on Coinbase because there was a limit on what you could wire in on a daily basis. I remember that so well. I mean, I remember. $10,000 per day. Yeah. Right. Remember right. So, Yep. So I yoloed it all in. There's a couple of my crew on this call right now. And the biggest number people could think of with Tom Leah Funstrat, Mike Novogratz was $10,000, $10,000. I remember, I remember Funstrat saying that. Exactly. I do remember that. Right. It's like, we get right. to 10,000. So yeah. Right. So I want you guys on the call to understand they all said 10,000. And this was after the all time high of $2,000 the previous week. And they said, oh my God, Brian Kelly dumped all of his bags and everybody else and they flamed him. I could find the tweet. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, so what happened was the reason why they picked $10,000 was simple because it started the year at a thousand and ten thousand dollars is a ten x. Right. It's a round number, and what proceeded to happen is it missed by a hair twenty thousand dollars, and people could not understand how this happened. I cashed out some money, bought a massive house, and then I repeated in cycle number two. I became an accredited investor. I also did the whole thing with the grayscale. I did the private placements, and then I launched it. Had to hold it for a year, then it changed for six months. Cycle number two, I bought an even bigger freaking mansion, okay, <laughs> here in California. And, Todd, you, Fred, you said something. You guys don't understand. The mark of success is how much taxes you pay. And when you pay a seven-figure tax bill to the IRS, you won. And if anybody ever says to me, no, you didn't win because you paid taxes, you didn't get it. That is the mark of the approval. And you said that, Fred, on a call about a week ago or two weeks ago. You said you paid a seven-figure tax bill. Uh, that means, I, that means I, 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 paid, I, I paid a seven-figure tax bill in 1992. Right. I didn't have <laughs> 1992. I know. I get it. And I did not have the pleasure of doing that <laughs> in, until 2021 paying a – well, actually, yeah, I didn't have the pleasure of paying a seven-figure tax bill until then. Nah. This year, I plan on also having a seven-figure tax bill. Why, guys? I get you're gonna if your position is under a hundred grand, you need to hodl like me. I did this stuff. I sliced off small percentages, 10, 20 percent at the top. Paid my tax bill. I didn't and I didn't yolo it into Dogecoin and watch it dump because you can't declare bankruptcy with the IRS and discharge on a tax bill. So when we come back here, is this a speculative investment? Yes. And so, Fred, what I'm say is I don't use the term lottery ticket with my friends or with people that I meet. If you don't understand this and you don't want to get into this, that's fine. You're not going to make it. You'll never retire in your life. And I say that flat out right to them. So sorry to be sound forceful. But, guys, the reality here is if we break the all-time high, which will probably happen by next week or over the weekend, Right, it's never done an all-time high from a previous epic before the halving. As Michael Sayer said, all models will be broken. And do I think it could do a five X from here this year? Yes. And I'd like to be wrong. I'd like it to go higher. So five X from here. I think that you guys should go figure out. Today's a Friday. Buy as much as you can. Like Sayer's been saying since 2020. Load up like you can because that's an ETF. And you know what? If Coinbase goes down, you can't buy on there. So I would tell you, if there's any questions on this call, chime in. So I would like to also just say one thing, Grant. So, sure. you know, what what are the, you know, just in terms of the, the drivers here, you know, um, sure. you know, Matt Haugen was on with uh, CNBC. He's the, 
I saw a bit like you saw that, that right? right? And yeah. I thought that was a really great thing because the the the, the interviewer, I forget who it was, um, was saying, uh, "Okay, is this uh, is this retail or is this advisor? Institutional, right? Yeah, remember his, that? His answer was all the above. He, it, but then they started drilling, and he goes, "Well, listen, the advisors really haven't kicked in yet." <laughs> well, you know. so 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 guys, let me explain why. Look, um, Hunter Horsley and and uh, Matt Hogan. I talked to those guys about doing the private placements four years ago with them for their the first Bitwise fund, and I didn't invest with them because I was purely um, a Bitcoin maximalist. Although I did through GBTC. Right. So, so my point about this is that they can only say certain things because they're in the finance industry. I'm an individual investor, okay. And so, from that perspective, I can pretty much say whatever I want now. So they're gonna they're gonna have to when they get on TV, they kind of have to like uh, um, be very conservative what they say. I've also posted about the arbitrage that goes on between um, the 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 uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs and MicroStrategy. So I, at the end of the day, they close out. Um, you can see with the algorithmic trading, they close out large blocks of shares. I'm on the West Coast. I'm in San Jose, and they close out. So it's at well. They close out large blocks of shares. So if you look at my, if you look at arbitrage in my feed, I post the links to it of how they arbitrage between all the spot Bitcoin ETFs in order to slice so, off the differences let's, between. So grain. Let's let's not yeah. get in. I, I don't want to get caught up into too many details, like especially like stuff with micro strategy or anything like that. No worries, leave it out. Okay. Yeah. The, the only reason I say that is let's just focus on this narrative right now, which is, you know. There is a potential now, right, uh, to really have this thing accelerate. And, and, and right now, this thing, if I had to guess between retail, institutional, and hedge funds and everything, I would say it's almost entirely right now uh, hedge funds and uh, retail, right? That, that's who's playing. The advisors have not kicked in yet, right? Agreed. The advisors have not kicked in, and who knows? That they'll, they'll kick in when it breaks the all time high that goes to 100,000. No, it, with, what I'm saying, that that's yeah. next week, or we think, right? Well, no, but there's right. always a lag. You got to call somebody and convince right. them, or, or, or if they have power of attorney to do it in the account, then they can do it quickly. But I do yeah. think that the, the RIAs have not kicked in. They probably have the yeah. conversations. That hasn't kicked in. I think it's the hedge funds, and I think any passive flows that they can move from other accounts into the spot Bitcoin ETFs are fueling this. Right. And it, so. It, this is just the beginning, right? Yes. This is the beginning, and the FOMO hasn't kicked in. Uh, by the way, the Google search volume, everybody, everybody's always retweeting that. If you look at back what the Google search volume was in 2017, in, up until May, June, it still wasn't high. You know, People were not FOMOing Google searches on Bitcoin in 2017 at this point. It all of a sudden picked up in August. You know what I mean? That's it's great. That's what I picked up. Right. And that's when everybody started saying, hey, hey, I mean, I remember it well because LA had turned into a complete blockchain hotbed. You know, uh, nobody was talking about anything else by August, September. But in May, they weren't. They, May was still sort of largely under the radar, right? In, in well, May of 2017. Right. So, Fred, I'll tell you what's a catalyst why this time is different than 2017 or in the previous, the previous run up. You, you did a list of the top Twitter accounts based upon the number of followers, right? And when you added up that list, I don't know, with the total is probably, what, 5 million? Now, there's probably repetition between all the different um, people that tweet about I this. Was, well, say there is 3 million, and you have to believe that if you're into Bitcoin, you probably feel, you probably follow Sailor. Right, so let's, let's just... Let's, so just you, say let's, it's, let's say it's 4 or 5, you know, right, somewhere in that Right, right. And there's 330 million people in America, so you're... And, 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 and so... You literally have, you know that there's kids and people that have no money to do it, right? I mean, under age, yeah. age 18. So 3 million followers of Michael Saylor, the reality is, how many people know about Bitcoin and follow what's going on? It's 1%. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it's a huge amount. And so that's what's different than 2017. I mean, we had people talk, you know, John McAfee. I'll eat my, you know, my blah 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 on TV if Bitcoin hits this dollar yeah. amount. I he, agree with he was he was a clown, and so the clowns are out of this now. They're serious money, serious people, um, and I'm not trying to take you to task, but I would not call this a lottery ticket. I would say if you okay, make, I agree if, with that. yeah, if you make a mistake now, and you're not going to want to talk to me in six months 
when this does a three X from here, and they'll be like, "There's a guy in the car." A better, a better, a better thing is a lifeboat. It's, it's, it's like a, a lifeboat it's a, it's, on the it's Titanic. A life, it's a lifeboat, and a guy, on, a guy that's listening right now, coined the term mofo, M O F U. Instead of have fun staying poor, mofo, M O F U, is missed out, fucked up. Yeah. And you'll, you'll have people saying, oh, this Ponzi scheme is happening for a third time. And it'll be like, it's not a Ponzi scheme. And by the way, if anybody ever says that term to you, okay, because the greater fool theory, the response to that is this. All non-dividend paying stocks, okay, subscribe to the, to the uh, right, Ponzi, subscribe to that greater fool theory because it does not generate any dividends. All non-dividend paying stocks, the only way you realize a profit is mm-hmm. you sell to somebody that pays more money than what you paid for it. And I say it to finance people and they look at me like, what? I'm like, if you don't understand that, then you need to shut up. Okay? Yeah. So all non-dividend stocks subscribe to the greater fool theory. Look, I mean, you know, you have, you have Warren Buffett owns Apple. Apple pays uh, a 0.54% dividend. He's not buying Apple because of the dividend. Exactly. And by the way, Warren Buffett, you know this, did not buy the, even though it was in Berkshire Hathaway, I don't know the name of the guy, came aboard and did that there for him. He refused yeah. to do it. And by the way, Warren Buffett plays bridge with a with, uh, well-known story with Bill Gates, and he never bought Microsoft stock. Yeah. No, right. Clear, clearly. He's not, he's not a visionary in that sense. Correct. So don't be don't be Warren Buffett and, and put all your money in the Washington Post right now. You know, put, right. put your so, money so, put your so money in I, the next thing. So. Right. So what I'll say about Warren Buffett is that was a great investing strategy from the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. He deserved. I'm not a billionaire. I'm not one of the richest men in the world. But I don't have to work again for the rest of my life. But my point is, is that that strategy that he had and Berkshire Hathaway stock being at whatever six hundred thousand dollars a share. I haven't checked it recently. Okay, I get that. I truly, he deserves all the respect that he gets from that. But that investing strategy today will not help you get ahead. Okay, okay. and so from that perspective, yeah, so I'll stop my rant right now. Okay. But let's hear from British Leader. who's always got the, the, the very interesting take. So I'm going to pass it on to British for 24, is 2024 the new 2017, 2017 British uh, yes and no. I think that there is uh, there is signs like it's the same thing, but this is a completely different market. I mean, we're talking about six hundred million dollars going in two days in a row into these ETFs. I mean, this is this is beyond the mathematical calculations that I've done in every video that I've put out so far. Like if we average out five hundred million dollars a day, like. The, the, this is this is this is unbelievable, right? And then today we, they just we, we are not going to have. Yeah. There will not be any Bitcoin supply to buy in six months. It's not going to be available. Yeah, no. It's just at this rate, right? Like the Bitcoin's going away. Um, and again, I don't subscribe to the idea that there won't be any supply because at the end of the day, when it when things like this start happening, all that needs to happen is the price has to come and meet meet uh, the supply, right? So we just need to. We just need to wait until uh, the price gets to $150,000 where more people that were holding on from 2015, 2016 realize, hey, I probably need a mansion like Grain of Thought as well. And they decide, okay, maybe it's time for me to cash out now uh, and then we'll get some supply. So I think so, here's hey, what I think is... I, I just want to try one quick point. When I say that I cash out, I slice off 5 and 10%. I don't want people to think, oh, I'm going to dump all this and then wait for it. In this cycle, it's how little I could sell to keep enough going for. If somebody asks me, how much Bitcoin do I do I have? Not enough. That's always the answer. How much Bitcoin? Yeah. Not enough. There's I'm that great Simpsons off. thing. There's that great 10%. Simpsons thing, great grain of salt. You know, the Simpsons thing where the guy goes, free financial advice. And it's like, you don't have enough Bitcoin. That's your free financial. That's advice. my free. Fi- and by the way, I, I and actually, I'll, I'll say a different way. That's a million dollar piece of advice I just gave you, and you could choose to mess that up if you if if you choose to be uh, um, lackadaisical and not understanding it. I'm dead serious with people, and I, I want to tell you guys one thing: is that um, I moved into a giant house in January of 2018. Okay, here in here in San Jose, California, and people are like, yeah. "This doesn't make sense." When I got my Ferrari. 
people are like, <laughs> they were like, holy shit. I'm like, guys, what do you mean you didn't understand this when I bought this massive house? And when I got the Ferrari, everything changed. And people got, they're like, oh, you're serious about this. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? So, and, and now in this cycle, things are different for me. And they're like. I, so, so what you're saying, Grain, is that the Ferrari, the Ferrari is the new Lambo, but, right? Well, no, actually, I'm, so I had that, but now I think I'm going to have one of each. And people be like, "Oh, you're going to go one of these, right? Oh, that's right. Good. And, Mix and match, right?" And so what happens? People are like, "What do you what what do you, what do you mean you're here in a Ferrari? What do you mean you're here in a Lambo? I thought you had a Ferrari." And the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm not trying to show <laughs> off, guys, but for what what changed people's blew their mind was the Ferrari it wasn't the massive house here in Silicon Valley. Okay, no, they, the, they, they didn't. They're like, "Oh, okay." And so what I'm trying to say, guys, you want to keep as much. So I believe in stacking as much as possible, but when you have life changing well, money, you know, about 10%. I'll, t- I'll tell you a funny story about Ferrari's crane. You know, uh, Richard Rosenblatt, who's sort of a big LA guy. He launched uh, demand media and he sold MySpace to Fox back in the day. Uh, when he, uh, when he first made a bunch of money, you know what he did for his mom? He bought himself a Ferrari and he bought his mom a Ferrari as well. So that's that's right. what a good boy does. Right. So I'll tell you guys, I retired my dad. I took care of some family members. There's multiple people listening right now that drove my Ferrari. That gave me the greatest joy. You can drive it. And they did. Yeah. Okay, Legion, you you're next and then uh then let's let's keep on keep on oh G Hoddle wants to, to go in. Legion, you're 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 next. Go ahead. Yeah, do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I mean, everyone to their own, but when I heard, like, uh, Ferrari is a new Lambo, I would say Bitcoin is a new Lambo. <laughs> Lambo. Well, let's say Bitcoin is a new mansion, because I am personally don't not interested in Ferrari or mansions, even so I could buy it. I mean, I would much uh, better prefer to hold this new asset with substantially higher potential i mean no look i think <laughs> i think one of the things i put out legion i put out some stuff on twitter just kind of funny like here's the house in san francisco what do you prefer that house like dilapidated house or do you want 40 bit yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean i, right. I, I thought i mean I, thought, yeah, <laughs> I mean i think you have to ask yourself okay you want to buy a new car great okay hundred thousand dollar car wow okay great that car is really going to cost you a million dollars right that's going to cost you just, you just you just blew a million yeah, bucks. Probably at the very least to differ. <laughs> probably yeah. more. So it's like you really you know, any expense that you might have in the next two, three years, you really might want to consider just moving it. Yeah, but obviously if you want to blow if you want to buy some modern art, you know. Uh, the other thing I would say is is this is if this thing happens the last thing you want to be doing is experimenting in some altcoin, okay? Because if you, if you, you, I don't know, there's all these people kind of hit me up and they're like, what about cash? It's the new Bitcoin. Or what about this? It's the new Bitcoin. I'm like, you know what? It, I'm not even going to, com- I'm not even going to comment because I don't know what this cast is going to do or you know, whatever, you know, is going to do. You know what I mean? But. All I know, or your board ape, or whatever is going to do. I have no idea what that's going to do, right? But I will tell you, at the end of the 2024, 20, 20, 20, you're going to be able to sell your Bitcoin. You're going to be able to spend your Bitcoin. And I'm not so sure you're going to be able to spend your board ape. <laughs> you might have bought the wrong board ape, too. That's the other problem. Right? You might have bought the one with like the, the blue uh, mustache or something, you know? And unfortunately, the blue mustache ape is worth nothing compared to the regular apes. I don't know. So, but, uh, you know, be very careful. <laughs> yeah, so, to your point of being careful, I, I just did some math, right? And if we get 500, say if this evens out at $500 million a day worth of inflows from all of these asset managers, after the halving, I've accounted for 450 Bitcoin a day plus 30% of float from other people selling. You're looking at an equilibrium price is $854,700 a Bitcoin. Just on the daily purchase. And, and you know what? British, that is not crazy, right? That, that's the scary part. The scary part is... That is not crazy. Year, this year? Yeah, that would be the equi- that, that would just be the equilibrium price. So we would so, build up to that. 
Uh, let's get Ben. Ben that? has a Ben. Ben has some comment. Ben, uh, nice to hear from you. Hey, good to see you guys again, British. I, I love your stuff, can and, and you, I, I've been playing. Uh oh, Fred, I think you're having issues me? again because we can hear Ben. I don't know if you can hear him. Ah, damn. Okay. We can hear oh. Let me uh, make British again a co-host, uh, and then I'm gonna jump back off and back on. I do not know why this does this. I'm gonna make Legion also. Invite to co-host if you want. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hop off. You guys made. continue. Okay. Well, yeah, I want to riff on what you were saying, Hoddle. Um, th- those are the same numbers I'm coming up with. And it, it, it blows my mind because when we're looking at 2017 versus this cycle, the barrier to entry, which is kind of everything in business, like you want to sell a product or you want to have a price line, or you want to put the prices for any product out of a business owner. It's all about the barrier entry. Like, what's it worth? You know, what kind of level of effort are you going to deal with? And so, these ETFs have changed the game uh, uh, in orders of magnitude with this barrier of entry just being dissolved and it's gone. So, in my opinion, <laughs> it's a real easy gold rush move, like we talked about last time, just to just to hit buy. These guys have so many assets that. They're going to blow the minds and melt faces off of, off of everyone. Um, and, and as a level set, you know, I, I'm not one of these. I'm not a super rich guy like some of these guys on the stage. But I have had some angel investments, you know, get bought by Amazon. I've had some things where it's like, oh, wow, here's a, here's a piece of the life that didn't used to be available to everyone because you had to be an accredited investor, which has all these barriers to entry. But you know, you, you grab a hold of a, for me, my unicorn was it took eight years of an investment to do a 12X. And it was like eight years of just wondering how the hell that thing's going to turn out. I have no access to the money. I couldn't loan it out and make interest on it. It was just, it was just where the, I guess that's uh, my insight into VC capital. That was what you had to put up with. But with Bitcoin, I mean, you could be anybody. You have access to this. It's like you say, Hoddle, like the poor man's uh, way to invest was housing for the last, uh, well, I don't know, decades. But, you know, the poor man can't get a house. They can't make a down payment on a house anymore. The poor man, or the maybe middle class, will have like a 401k and they will have some other savings they've, you know, squirreled together. <laughs> and they can buy any portion now. Exactly. Uh, $20 exactly, Ben. Exactly. It is. It is become. It has democratized yeah. the best asset in the world, right? And yeah. and actually, it the is. guys, the, the guys with their advisors and everything, they're at a disadvantage right now, right? Because the advisors needs to study it more, and then blah blah blah. But you can just go out and buy whatever you want right now. So yeah, hey, I want to make a. Oh my god! And I don't have to deal with tenants. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, I'm, Ben, I'll make a quick point about this. Um. The friction has been removed because of spot Bitcoin ETFs. So, again, why is this different than 2017? In 2017, while you could buy GBTC in your IRA, which I did, and I didn't incur, obviously, any tax implications for making that uh, rotating IRA as Facebook that I was in before that, um, what happened was people wouldn't buy it because it traded OTC. And because, oh, it's a pink sheet. It's a penny stock. So they, it had a major split of 90 for 1 in January of 2018. But I bought it at sub two hundred dollars. If you do the split, um, my original purchase now, if you look at GBTC being at fifty five, it was a dollar seventy to give context. So I'm up like whatever thirty five hundred percent. So if you're new to this and you're trying to do it and you're not rich, that is totally cool and that is awesome. Buy the spot Bitcoin ETFs, whatever they are, fifty five dollars a share, fifty bucks a share. Buy as many shares as you can. And then you sit on it until you acquire a big enough stack. And it could take you four years. It, I just had the fortune of being an older person. I'm in my 50s to move more money into it quickly. But that friction, so many people had ridiculed me for buying a penny stock. And so when I bought it at sub $200 because of the premium, the, pre, the peak price, and you can't compare what I'm saying now because they had a big split, it, went, it hit $3,500 a share. And people are like, how can you have a pink sheet, GBTC, over-the-counter penny stock be $3,500 a share? And they, they could not comprehend. And because there was a huge premium on it, that's why it had did almost double what Bitcoin did. So 
do I think that this is the same as 2017? No, I think this is a better opportunity. And what everybody said in this call is true. Do I think that this can go to $500,000 by June? Yeah. Do I know it's going to happen? No. And I would, I would go with the mindset. That's the word I use, the mindset. I need to stack as much as I can, not buy any cars, not buy anything, at least for the next three to six months, and stack as hard as possible. Uh, I think that's like when you know, know. three to six months, by the way, Grant Grant is old. That that you know it Well the percentage will always be the percentage gain, but you've got an opportunity now. And if you didn't stack or you need to rotate out of something else into this, do it now, today, before the market closes today. I would not wait over the weekend. We can get a candle over the weekend, go to seventy thousand, you come up and everything is up. 30-40% on Monday in your IRA account because you, you didn't do something in the next three hours. Can I throw in one more bullish point? Um, so the, the tailwind we have now compared to 2017, it's, it's not just the barrier entry has been dropped. It's it's the the first time uh, you see those uh, the metrics guys put out showing the Ill, uh, liquid supply versus illiquid supply and it's been going down for, I think it's like two years or something, you know, the liquid supply on the, on the exchanges, they're really easy to sell and, and get rid of, or, or, you know, whatever, give to BlackRock shares that are Bitcoin that's out there is, uh, been going down. So we've hit, uh, that's also a tailwind that I think, you know, supply demand, we've got 500 million average this week coming in to the market just from the ETFs in the US uh, on one side, but on the other side, we've got what appears to me to be the kind of the first bull market we've had this supply going down thing. So we're fighting over, like, like we saw on Wednesday, holy shit, we saw, you know, uh, Caitlin just came out and she's like, yeah, well, I have a, a source that says there were only 40, 40 Bitcoin left on the OTC desk. And, and sure, I mean, that's a small view. There's other OTC desks. There's all the things. But I think that that was sort of a pre-shock to show us, look, the thing moved like 2K. I mean, I think I drove to work and it was 2K higher or something. It, it moved so fast. And all we need, and, and I think it could be this weekend, it could be tomorrow, uh, we just need one of those $600 million days of ETF buying when, when Grayscale clams back up <laughs> and we'll see that again because we've had the the supply that's out there that's ready to sell at these prices is pretty much gone now in the old days in 2017 it took the having to have that kind of shock cutting the the flow in half and then it took two months to four months for all the people who were like okay at the price of the day to buy sell buy sell buy sell eventually it kind of whittled through the people who would sell at that price BlackRock just did that in a 10x form, but it was on the um, the demand side. They went like 10x the demand from 20 million a day, I think is what was our equilibrium to buy 900 Bitcoin. That was back when the price was at like 20,000, but that was the equilibrium. 20 million had to come into the market every day to hold the price at about 20,000 per Bitcoin. And, and I remember people were saying, that's a lot of money, 20 million a day. <laughs> Right. Remember that? Right. You remember? Does anybody yeah. remember? I'm not going crazy, but everybody, everybody was yes, sitting there going, yes, absolutely. "How are they going to find 20 million a day?" That that people were people were talking about the fact that that 20 million a day was so far above the limit of what was what what would actually be needed in the Bitcoin market to move it. And again, in the last cycle, everything I've read tells me it was about a 25 billion dollar move that caused the three three thousand five hundred sixty nine cake. We've, we've blown through, that. we're going to blow through that before this bull market even gets started this time around. This is, uh, this is a shocking amount of capital. We're adding right now, in terms of the total fund stuff, we're adding 100,000 Bitcoin demand per month. Minimum. Minimum 100,000. It's shocking. It might go to 200,000 um, Bitcoin a month of demand. Okay? That means a million in, in, in the space of five months. This thing is not going to, we are not waiting till the end of 2024 for this thing to, this rocket ship to take off. I don't think it, not at these kind of levels of demand. 100%. That equilibrium price that British talks about, you've been talking about for a while, British, but it's, 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 I've been churning over it. And then 
it really is. It's like the tailwind is behind us. Whenever the equilibrium price is above the price of today, there is a tailwind. And right now it's so strong. I'm, I'm trying not to buy leverage right now because I'm so bullish and I just have standards and I can't get screwed again. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah, I'll, I mean, listen, look, just to, to, put it, to put it into perspective, like Tom Lee was talking about $150,000 Bitcoin by the end of 2024. And and his flow estimate were, was like two hundred million dollars a day. We're currently trending double that for the last week. So it's like I don't know what's gonna happen here, guys. All I know is you better buy as much fucking Bitcoin as you can as quick as possible. But I've been trying to say this since August, but no one no one listens to me, Fred. What am I? Oops, I'm listening. I'm listening, but British. I've been listening to you since 2017, actually. You know, uh, I'm not saying you you impacted me. But you did. I've been listening to you. I remember your original um, American Huddle YouTube. It was great. Yeah. Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to add some comments. Uh, I mean, do you hear me? Okay. Uh, we can hear you. Yeah, I just thought you know. Uh, to be honest, I like to play to play some races and so on, and it just uh, appears to me like this metaphor that we just hit some cheat code with this Bitcoin ETF and right now after each mile we get another Nitro and we just accelerate more and more and more and after all like each new price level we will have just more players which will be interested to join like this uh, Merrill Lynch thing and Wells Fargo recently I guess they will just all fall down one by one maybe it sounds a bit too optimistic but you know it's like very realistic actually yeah, to that point, Legion, I think the one thing that everybody keeps on thinking, they think that at the price goes up, the demand will go down. And actually, as the price goes up, the demand is going to go up. Okay. I know it's surprising, but the price going up will mean that iBit has a better track record, and that means that more people are going to want to buy iBit. And that's just the way this thing works. In, in addition to that, that in I, I want to, I want to, let me try it It's called a Veblen good. V-E-B-L-E-N. A Veblen good. It's on Wikipedia. And, and high end, you can, any, they ascribe it to luxury goods. They just tweeted about that today. So, folks, look it up. It's a real economic term of Veblen good, and you explain that to people. And there are lots of things like that. You I'm sorry, guys. I, there was some static. I need to... I need to just, I need to reset it. So, uh, grain of salt, one more time. Yeah, so um, I tried, I was picking up a, um, a daily driver 911, and what happens is it's called, it's called a Veblen good. The price goes up. As the price goes up for that vehicle, it becomes more in demand because it's a better product and they want to get it. So, it defies the normal economic terms. And you guys should look it up, read it on Wikipedia, and, and understand that. And Bitcoin is the ultimate Veblen, Veblen good. It's not a luxury item. It's a necessary item. You need to have that in order to retire. And so look at that and and, um, and make appropriate things. Again, there's, whatever, three hours left in the trading day today. I would load up on the spot Bitcoin ETFs because what do you think the price will be on Monday? You do not try to trade You're this not trading it. you got to load like, it before it happens. Do, do not. Just like, and that's why I'm saying like, don't be too smart because if, if you kind of want to get in, you need to. We we are still below the all time high, uh, and I would say, you know, this is as uh, Legion said, the cheat code, right? You just you you're allowed to get the turbo accelerator, and you know, it's like I've been playing this uh, Super Mario Mario Party game, and it's like boom, you know, the princess touches you, and you know, you get all these powers, and I think, look, this market. Once Bitcoin is at a hundred thousand, you're going to hear about it every fucking minute on CNBC. That's what's going to happen. Agreed. Every minute they're going to be talking about C this thing. Agreed. Every minute of the day, they should change the name from CNBC to BNBC <laughs> because that's what it's going to be. You know the other thing, guys. I think what happens? To, I think it's important to um, point out here that boomers and Gen X are much better at selling an asset than any millennial will ever be. Boomers know 
how to take profits and turn it into things that will sell the asset even more. Just like Grain of Salt mentioned about the Ferrari and the mansion and stuff like that. Millennials and, and Gen Z, etc., etc., have become like this hybrid pussy generation that doesn't want to do that, doesn't want those symbols of success. Whereas boomers and Gen X will have no fear in doing that. So you watch and wait and see what happens when everyone's talking about the fact that I just got this car, I just got this house, I just got this holiday, I just got this house, uh, holiday home, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's because of Bitcoin and what that does to the boomer mindset uh, and, and the amount of money that floods into this as a result of that. There, hey, it, hey, hey, Brutus, I, I want to start to cut you. I want to chime in about that. The so I'm a Gen Xer, okay. I'm in I'm in my mid fifties. The boomer generation and the silent generation, my dad, they look at this as magical internet money. It makes no sense whatsoever, and it's a scam and a Ponzi. The people that are my generation is, holy crap, that was real for you now. And they're like, I can't do this because I don't understand anything. The millennials and, and the younger people are like, please tell me how to do this. I want to, you've got the Ferrari, you were able to buy a house how do I do this? And those people I spend the most time with, but they have the least amount of money. But I have no problem spending time with people that want to learn and explain it to them. I say, you want this car? You have to buy. You, you don't go out to dinner. You don't go on vacation. You save as much money as possible in your IRA account, your brokerage account, your Coinbase account. You buy as much Bitcoin, spot Bitcoin ETFs until it hurts. You don't do any of it on margin. You don't trade it. You buy it, and then you look at it, and you do nothing. And the young people that listen will, will be able to buy a house one day. The other people, they're all screwed. I don't know how else to say it to you guys. I just say to them now, have fun staying poor. You're not going to make it, and you missed out and fucked up. And I'm very sorry that it happened because we've got Michael Saylor talking to 3 million people that are following this, and you're seeing it on Bitcoin NBC all day long at 100000 Why didn't you buy it a year ago? Why didn't you buy it four years ago? Why didn't you buy it seven years ago? Your excuse is the same. You don't deserve to have what, what the people that did the homework did. And I want you guys to take the victory lap. My victory lap was buying really nice cars and a nice house. If your victory lap is quitting your job or paying for your parents or for your kids or buying college educations, go do that. And I've already done that. So stack as much as possible. Listen to Fred. Do not trade this. Do not buy it on margin. And again, what do you think the price is going to be in three days or in a week or in a month or in a year? And if the number is higher, you should be doing everything possible to stack. And British Hoddle, you did a great job. And I love when you told the story about the cigar and how you thought that you were smart because you doubled your money and you sold your stack. That was very inspirational. It really was. And so I commend you for, you, I watch your videos and I think they're great. And any naysayers, because you say you don't, you know, your information is for people with $500,000 or more, but if you have no money, you have no money. So keep on doing what you're doing, guys. It's really very appreciative and I think you're doing great. May I? I uh, what happens when they, uh, can you hear me? Go ahead. Hello? We can okay, hear you. great. Fred, I tease you, but I love you. You're great, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm a traditional Bitcoiner, self-custody all the way. A lot of us traditional Bitcoiners are giving hell to these, you know, ETF buyers. Listen, Bitcoin is for everyone, Okay. We need to get out of our little tribal camps and we need to see the big picture here. And this is what I want to discuss briefly, the big picture, okay? None of you are bullish enough. I don't know you people talking about 100,000 and all this stuff. Listen, we need to look at the end game here, okay? Look at the end game. Uh, you know, if you listen to Samson Mao, you listen to Lynn Alden, you know, look at what Jan 3 is doing. The end game is nation state adoption, okay? And the only way to get there is through uh, evolutions, through steps, through eras, okay? We've gotten past the retail era, okay? We're moving into a new era here, okay? You need to think about this like starting a fire. When you start a fire, you don't throw big logs on the fire. You start with little twigs and you get the flames going and then you can add larger branches and then eventually, 
you can throw the whole damn tree on the fire and it just rages okay but you can't do that in the beginning we need if we we all would love to see bitcoin worth millions okay right i mean who here would not like to see that obviously how do we get there what is the end game we need to keep our mind on this because people who are just gonna you know think oh i'm gonna go to 100k and, and sell or even a half a million okay we have the the potential is unlimited here we're talking about a parallel system that's that's uh, parallel to central banking okay you need to start thinking the big picture here okay in that how do we get to nation state adoption to where nation states are accumulating and putting in their treasuries where they're setting up their own uh, sovereign mining operations it, then it Bitcoin will be unstoppable absolutely so, so, so hey, hey, hey Bitcoin bovine I totally agree but we're trying to limit it to 2024 oh, sure, and not sure but I, I just wanted, I, no no I'm just saying I agree that we should I want people to uh, that want to think right. about the long term no no we should we should and and what, what, what your point which is really good is don't think about this as a trade and you're going to sell it all and you're going to go into, uh, I don't know, <laughs> well, QQQs, right? That, that's right. not what we're talking about, right? We are not talking. I don't think anybody here is on that page like, oh, let's just get some Bitcoin and we will get some more QQQs. I, I'm no. just speaking. Bitcoin is the old. Yeah. Everybody here, I think, is, is on the thing is Bitcoin is the result. Now, of course, the question is, does your X amount of Bitcoin buy you the uh, palace? Uh, of grain of salt, or does it buy you a shack in San Francisco, right? I don't know. It depends on how much Bitcoin you start with, right? You don't automatically get the palace, because if you start with, you know, if you start with uh, 100,000 sats, that's not going to, there's no multiplier where 100,000 sats is going to get you the palace. It's not going to happen, right? But maybe if you start with a couple Bitcoin, you can get the palace, you know what I mean? Right. Well, the, so, the point. I, the, all I'm trying to do is speak to people who aren't when they when they hear uh, you know uh, when they hear people talk about a million dollar Bitcoin, they kind of scoff at it, and they're they're not seeing the big picture where we possibly could go here. I mean, the sky's yeah, the limit. We're going there. Yeah, we, the sky's the limit. We look. We we are going to a million dollar Bitcoin. I think the only question is when, and it's it's going to be. And my my thinking is. It's going to be pretty damn quick, okay? I think we're going to... Million dollar Bitcoin sounds a little crazy. And I think, by the way, Tom Lee and stuff, they would say this, but they don't want to sound totally ridiculous on CNBC, right? So they're going to come up with a $150,000 thing. They're going to come up with an estimate where they feel like it is bulletproof, that we they 100% will Let me get just make it. one last statement. They don't want to say, I'm going to do a million, and they get and they only get to 500000 or 250000 the guy goes... Ah, you see, you completely missed your target. You know, so there has to say one last, one last. What happens when they start uh, denominating in satoshis? Look, let's let's look at. I'm going to make one last statement. Look at oil and gas. Okay, we know that that Bitcoin mining is 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 an energy intensive operation, right? Every every nation state, every corporation that deals in oil and gas, this is huge to their to their uh, uh, profits. Okay, whether it's a nation state or a corporation, because of the way, uh, you know, the transportation of uh, liquid natural, you, you know, you know, you had the whole deal with Russia uh, and the uh, the pipelines being bro broken. Russia can take take their you know liquid uh, natural gas and use it to mine Bitcoin, and there there's evidence that they are doing that. And as soon as you have nation states, you know, you know, you got your uh, Arab countries. As soon as, you have, as soon as you have nation states starting to mine and accumulate Bitcoin, it's over. It's game over. You're going to see a billion dollar Bitcoin, you know, and then, then none of us will be able to buy it. And then those who have it, yeah, will be the uh, ruling, ruling the world. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. The scope is 2024 here, sir. I'm talking about 2124. Both God damn it. <laughs> Maria, please. Uh, why don't you hop in? If you, if you want. Uh, or, what happens? PBE, what happens we haven't when they, really heard from yeah. you too much. PBE or Maria? Yeah. What happens when they start denominating in Satoshis, like the original intent, and not just a full Bitcoin? 
Uh, denominating what in Satoshi? Dollars. You like like about right now, it. people think Bitcoin's 60 some odd thousand dollars. That's too much. I've missed, I've missed it versus like, you know, it's, it's spoken down to a hundred million Satoshis and start denominating listen, it in listen, dollars. Can I, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, right? But I need to say this way. Right? I, I, I've tried to say this since last August, but anyone who thinks that they need to denominate Bitcoin in Satoshis in order to convince people to buy it, it it's poor and they've missed out. They're not getting to one Bitcoin. It's over. In order to buy sixty to a hundred thousand dollars of one Bitcoin, you need three or four hundred thousand dollars of liquidity. There are people with two million dollar net worth that don't have three or four hundred thousand dollars of liquidity to make a hundred thousand dollar bet on an asset they know nothing about. There's too many people trying to save poor people and that game is over. Right now the game is to try and save the people who are worth one million to five million dollars. In the next cycle, you're gonna start trying to save people who are worth ten million dollars. It's over. Like, I don't know how else clearer to say it. Like, to get to one Bitcoin is over. You're packing up. Stop making excuses that people need denomination in Satoshi. They don't. They just need to get smart and realize they're fucked. <laughs> but, but, guys, where yeah. the title's correct. You could already buy, because the unit bias has already been fixed. You could buy, first of all, you go to Coinbase, buy $100 worth of it. Or you can just go buy the spot Bitcoin ETFs at, at fifty dollars. And if you're not buying, if you're not buying whatever, I tell people you could buy a, a, a stock at fifty dollars a share, right? And you could buy ten shares of it, and that's five hundred bucks. Or you could buy one share of a five hundred dollar stock, and it, as long as they go up in the same percentage, it really doesn't matter. Um, what do you call it? I was going to say uh, Berkshire Hathaway has never had a stock split. Okay. So, people that have unit bias, as British Hoddle said, are just not going to make it. They're going to be in the MoFu category. Missed out, fucked up. Oh my God, it's $100,000. How can I buy a Bitcoin? And they have not done the basic homework to realize you can go to a spot Bitcoin ETF right now and buy for 50 bucks. you know, for your, your slice of it. And if they don't get that, they don't deserve to make it. It's too bad. I'm trying to be a nice guy about this. But I've been in this now for, I've known about it since 2014, didn't buy any in 2014. It, I've been re fully allocated since 2017. I just tell people, you know, good luck. Good, don't ask me about this in two years. You're not going to want to hear, hear the answer. It'll just be, you should have bought two years, you should have listened to me. I have lots of friends that I told us in 2017, didn't come along for the ride. Now they get to, they get to sit in the car next to me. And your daily driver right. 911, yeah. which, by the way, is a Veblen good to me. It, it is. And, and I go ahead. Can I add just to your point too? I, I'm sorry. I, I love where you're going with this, but uh, another difference between 2017 and today. Um, so the GME movement. I watched Dumb Money recently, and it was so damn good. But it, we, flipping the script over to the Satoshi type of stuff that PBE was talking about. This is the ultimate way to give it to the man. And since 2017, the pain of inflation to the middle, middle class, I mean, the upper middle class and middle class is disappearing because of how expensive everything's got and their wages haven't gone up as much. And, you know, all the things that cypherpunks uh, were sensitive to in the old days. But Bitcoin and buying a uh, stacking sats, as the songs and the rappers will say, I mean, they have a place in a sense of that movement hopefully we'll get going GME style because GME, yeah, uh, GameStop, sure, it was given it to the hedge funds who are like preying on companies that are weak. But but today, the whole system, the banks, the, the inflation and saving the banks with money that is taxation without representation, so to speak, it's just such a hard thing for people to grasp, the general public, that I don't know if that movement will really get as strong as GME did, but it should. It should be like an unsung or a... Uh, a black swan that comes at buying and stacking sats as a movement also. And I don't think it was as sensitive of an issue back in 2017. It's just gotten so much worse since then. All right. That was the point I'm making. Did I chill the, the other again? question? 
Sorry. Yeah, the other, <laughs> the other, the other question I have is, once all the Bitcoin have been mined or close to being mined, what is the incentive for the miners to keep securing the network? It's the fees. I, I think that's. Who, I think who, that's I, hold on. I think that's a good example of a question that misses the spirit of this call. This call you're is not going to make it. Like you're, you're not going that. That question right there is. is <laughs> you're not going to make it. If you're worried about twenty one forty and you can't figure out what you're going to do in the next three hours, you're not going to make it. <laughs> sorry, I'm not sorry. That's the way it is. Um, I want to explain a really so, crazy theory to your folks, and it'll make sense in a second. We talked about unit bias. I can't buy a Bitcoin because it's sixty thousand dollars, right? There's something called unit of account. Everything is getting less expensive when you think when you change your unit of account from dollars to Bitcoin, and I've posted about this. You could get a really nice Rolex watch in 2017. It was $2,000 when I bought into Bitcoin, right? It was five Bitcoins to get a nice $10,000 watch or any purchase, right? But now a Bitcoin is $60,000. And because I changed my unit of account in my head, this is incredibly hard for people to understand. Everything is getting cheaper for me. It gets cheaper for when you change in your head and you think in terms of how many Bitcoins does this cost me? If I want to get a $10,000 Rolex right now, it's only one-sixth of a Bitcoin. It has gotten cheaper for me to live. Okay? That is a very hard mathematical concept to understand. And when you change that, as Fred said, you can have 40 Bitcoin or you can have this house in San Francisco. And in one year from now, you could have that house for four Bitcoin. The house got cheaper. 